time for a UK general election. <laughs> well, this is a biggish U-turn in recent political history, but it's very clear that the Prime Minister's announcement today is one all about the narrow interests of her own party, not the interests of the country overall. You know, clearly she sees the opportunity, given the total disarray in the ranks of the Labour Party, to crush all opposition to her, to get rid of people that disagree with her and to give herself a free hand to take the country in the increasingly right-wing direction that she wants to take it in. And that would mean not just the hardest possible Brexit, but more austerity and deeper cuts. So now is the time uh, for Scotland's voice to be heard and for people in Scotland to stand up for the kind of country we want Scotland to be. And that's the campaign that I look forward to leading in the weeks ahead. Given your calls for another independence referendum and your resistance to Theresa May's approach to Brexit, are you partly responsible for this early vote? Well, I make no apology, and I don't think anybody would expect me to, for standing up for how people in Scotland by majority voted in the EU referendum, which was against Brexit at all, uh, but particularly uh, against a hard Brexit. Now, I think when you listen to Theresa May's statement this morning, it's that democratic opposition, which is healthy in any democracy, that she sees the opportunity to crush. And that would not be, uh, I think, a good way forward and would not be in Scotland's interest. You know, the question of what kind of country we want to be is going to very much be at stake in this election campaign and whether we want that to be a country, uh, the future of which is steered and directed by a, a Tory party moving ever more to the right or whether we want the people of Scotland to be in charge. So this is a, an opportunity to make Scotland's voice heard and make sure that we have MPs from Scotland that will first and foremost be about fighting Scotland's corner. Well, might the, the Tories crush at least some of your gains from the, the last general election this time around? Well, we'll be defending uh, all of the, the seats that we won uh, last time around and uh, I'll be fighting this election to win. I, I uh, think the Prime Minister has called this election for selfish, narrow party political interests, but she has called it and therefore I relish the prospect of getting out there, uh, standing up for Scotland's interests and values, standing up for Scotland's voice being heard and standing against the ability of a right-wing Conservative Party to impose whatever policies it wants in Scotland. So I relish the prospect. Will you seek a fresh mandate for an independence referendum in the context of Brexit? I've got a mandate for a second independence referendum. I won that mandate at the Scottish Parliament elections last year. And, of course, the Scottish Parliament has since voted by majority uh, for that position. Uh, so that uh, mandate is there and it's clear. This election will be about the kind of country we want Scotland to be uh, and whether we want the Tories to have a free hand in determining that or whether we want to make sure that we stand up for Scotland's public services, uh, for public spending against uh, further Tory austerity. These are the issues that will be to the fore in this campaign and I look forward to leading a campaign on them. But will you have a specific commitment in your manifesto for this election promising another independence referendum within 18 months to two years? My, my position on a second independence referendum is clear and it will continue to be clear throughout this campaign. It is as I set out in this very room just a few weeks ago that when the time is right it should be for Scotland to determine our own future, not for a Tory government to determine that future for us. So that position uh, is the one that we will take into this election uh, and the one that we will have uh, after this election as well. It will be in your manifesto? Uh, I'll set out our manifesto in due course, but the position on the referendum uh, will be the one that I set out in this room just a few weeks ago. When will you tell us your next move towards securing the power to have that vote? Well, I had planned to do that over the next few weeks, and that uh, is still the, the assumption I'm working on. Clearly, we have uh, a development today that changes the, the, the nature and the shape of the next few weeks. So I'll consider the timing of that in the context of the election campaign. And of course, I'll set out that to Parliament in due course. Can either Natalie McGarry or Michelle Thompson be SNP candidates in this election? Well, the SNP's National Executive Committee will meet over the next few days to set the terms of uh, candidates' uh, selection and these matters, as uh, well as a number of other matters, will be discussed by the National Executive Committee in the proper way. And for the record, maybe academic, will SNP MPs vote for this uh, election when Theresa May brings it to the House tomorrow? Well, we're not going to stand in the way of an election, albeit we think it's an election called for very cynical, selfish, party political reasons. But, you know, it's clear that uh, Labour is not going to vote against it, nor uh, I think are, are the Liberals. Uh, but I think people will judge Theresa May on the reasons for calling this election, and that will be a factor in how people choose to vote.